Municipal will return home for its big sky opener, hosting Montana on Saturday, September 28th, 1 p.m. kickoff at UC Davis Health Stadium. Root Sports will provide a nationally televised broadcast. On the call is Tom Glasgow and Taylor Barton. Scott Marsh, Doug Kelly, and Scott Berry will provide a call for Sports 1140 KHTK, also available on the station's TuneIn channel. Live stats, video stream, and internet audio broadcast links, as well as a link for tickets, are all available at ucdavisaggies.com. We will start today's uh, press conference with a opening statement from Coach Hawkins. Well, it was a great venue. Uh, super exciting game. Really uh, fun to play the Bison, fun to be in the Fargo Dome. Um, have UC Davis put ourselves in a situation to play in a game like that, in a meaningful game like that. That was, that's why you play, or it's one of the reasons you play college athletics. Uh, give them a lot of credit. They played great. They played great till the end. That's why they've uh, been wearing the belt so many days. And we just need to play a little bit cleaner. Got to have a few more details. I think always the gap between good and uh, or, or average and good is probably like that. But the, the gap between great and excellent is like that so that's what we have to learn to capture just a little bit but super proud of our guys effort the way they handled it uh, we did not blink at all didn't blink there didn't blink at Cal I think our guys are super confident in what they can do and um, but uh, came home with a loss learned a lot um, played against a very good football team but did not play well enough even though we played well but not well enough uh, good to be back home. It's kind of crazy to think we've had four games and only one home game thus far uh, against another really good opponent. The Big Sky Conference uh, never ceases to amaze me, and a lot of these teams have won national championships and expect to win national championships, and that's what makes it fun. Uh, had a great game with them last year, expecting a great game this year, and it'll be the first game with the students, so we get a, hopefully we get a ton of students. The run of the freshmen will be on, but I hope to see uh, UC Davis Health Stadium uh, filled with 10,000 plus and, and make it the great college venue that it is. And uh, so we're looking forward to playing at home. We're looking forward to opening the big sky and, and getting better. Is there questions at this time? So my uh, daughter, who will be a freshman at UC Davis, said you were a real kid last night at the rec hall. Well, the players did the dancing. I was going to get up there and dance. I didn't know if I was stretched out enough, warmed up enough. I don't know if they've seen the guy's stiff guy dance like that as much. But, yeah, they had a welcome party that the athletic program put on. I thought it was really cool, really well run, and doing a great job engaging. The, the uh, pavilion was packed. They keep calling it the rec hall. Can I call it the rec hall? Call it the rec hall. Thanks. All right. Uh, it was packed. I said, man, let's get it like this for every basketball game, and let's get over here to, to uh, uh, Health Stadium and, and rock this place. You fired her up. She canceled her Saturday plans, and she's going around. She's trying to find every Davis High kid who got into UC Davis and get them all at the game. And you, you fired her up. Talk a little bit, if you would, about about two two things: the students being back and how much that kind of support matters. You just to a player walking around campus on a Wednesday, and then also from the player standpoint, after four weeks of, or actually seven weeks, eight weeks of no classes, no, none of that, now going into this right in the middle of the week. Yeah, well we've sort of eased them into this schedule as we've gone along here, so we sort of sloped down into the morning uh, time slot, and we were pretty much did this schedule last week as well, so they should be used to it and worked on them getting organized. It will be a little bit of a shock to their system to some degree, um, but I think it also breathes a little fresh air. I think it'll be great for them to get uh, intellectually stimulated and take on some of their classes and see their professors and see the students run around and really get a sense for the college environment and what UC Davis is all about. And it's a, a massive university. It's got a lot of kids, a lot of students, a lot of things going on. So I think the energy of the students just being back will be great for them. Uh, it's always fun to play in front of a big crowd. There's a lot of energy there that means a lot to our players. I think the thing I really talk to the students, and I do this with our players as well, is don't live in a silo. I don't care what it is you do. I don't care what your major is. I don't care what sports you play or what club you're in. There are so many great people. What makes UC Davis great are the people here. And so don't walk down the sidewalk 
and not say hi to somebody. Don't miss out going to see different events, different clubs, different activities, and interact with those people. And don't just be in a silo because you've got 35,000 of the most amazing people uh, in America really located on one campus. And you want to connect with those people. And the more we connect with each other, the better we make us all. And uh, so hopefully we get a lot number of those students out here, not just the freshmen. I think our athletic pro program is doing a great job uh, really working on just the marketing and really the events and trying to make um, our stadium really a place to go and have fun. They've got a concert going on Friday night. They're engaging the students. They're going to have a number of programs inside the stadium. They continue to work on that. Uh, you want it to be a place and really you look at pro sports. Uh, the game is always part of it, but there's other things going on and you want to go where you're going to, your wife and you or your kids, you're going to enjoy being there and and sometimes it's football, but it's not always just football. And I think our athletic program is doing a good job with that right now. So I'm excited to see the crowd and see what happens here this weekend. Go, going back to Saturday, um, you were talking earlier about the defense being disruptive and, and more turnovers, and yet uh, not quite there yet. Are there some different wrinkles planned, or are you just going to be Well, it's tough against those guys, the way they right. do it. We disrupted the heck out of Lehigh and got a lot of turnovers. But, they, you know, they're <laughs> these guys are a championship football program for good reason. They don't turn the ball over. They turned over the one time where Day-Day got a good piece of that kid, and he coughed it up. But they do a good job leveraging the football and not throwing the ball in the crowd. And they, they're a little different in terms of just the formations they run, so it's a little bit harder. But I thought our defense played great. They did, they did an awesome job. That's a very good offense. Uh, they got a lot of things they can do. They've got a running quarterback. They can throw as well. Uh, they're bigger than heck up front. So I thought they did a great job. And so trying to get to them when you've got two tight ends and two backs, it's hard to disrupt that. It becomes more of a, a bulldozer effect rather than uh, a, a raging uh, hornet's nest, I guess. So, uh, But every team's a little bit different. That's part of the big sky. I mean, these guys are a little more spread it out. They also have a running quarterback, very dangerous. So it'll be a different test for sure. In, in the game on Saturday, there were uh, a few notable injuries. How are Eaton and Petek and, and uh, Yeah, they're good. Perryman. You're getting to that point in, in the college football season where we, we've all done it. You're, you're, hey, we all carry hard at You still got your Achilles injury going on. And uh, Bob, what's your, are you hip knee? I forget what's your. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm good. You're full go. I'm you're full probable this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm ready to start. All right. Uh, but it's, it's college football, and I think it's really a metaphor for life, too. Very rarely do we get to walk around every single day, and there's not something going on somewhere in our life. So, uh, But that's part of college football. But we're, we're in good shape. Did you get a chance to see, look back, looking back on film, on that play at the end of the game, Devin King almost jumped yeah. the last drive Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of crazy because he, he jumps the ball, makes a pick against Montana last year. It was a big play in that game. And, uh, you know, he just didn't get that one. But... Not for want to. Nobody wants to more than that, more than uh, Devin King, that's for sure. How's he kind of seen his, his progression to go? It seems like he's been kind of one of your best players. It's hard to go through the day to day. Uh, I know people do. I think it's all, I'm always amazed at the amount of adversity some of these guys go through um, off the field that a lot of people don't always know about. And I couldn't be more proud of him. It's, it's the beauty of being a coach, and it's sport done right. But this kid continues to push to the middle. He continues to grow. He continues to mature. Um, when many times he probably could have walked the other way or proclaimed it got too tough for him or he just couldn't take it, he just kept stepping forward. And he's truly a leader on our football team. He's truly an inspiration. Um, very, very mature, focused. Uh, I love the kid. I really do. He's everything that's great about college football, and uh, couldn't be more proud of everything he's gone through. But he's a, one of the best players in the conference for sure. He's one of the best players on our football team. Tim, uh, Bobby Hopp won seven out of seven when he was there first go round. Is that possible today to win seven straight Big Sky championships? Oh, geez, I don't know. Uh, that's beyond me. I'm just trying to win one game this week, but. Uh, they obviously have been a cornerstone in this conference, and they've invested heavily in their, their football program, and it's and it showed, um, as have a lot of teams in this league. But uh, he's a good coach. He's been around, and they certainly are uh, 
equipped to do that. Um, people look back, close loss to Cal, and really, you know, fought hard to get to market, but I think even in losses, those things almost benefit you, thinking late November, you know, playoff season, if, if you're lucky enough to be there. I think they I think they can if they're manifested right. We don't get really caught up in the product. We really hang on the process and and really invest in that of finding ways to get better. I think too, too many times if you win, it's hey, great job. If you lose, oh my gosh. But you have to have the capacity to learn from your mistakes. You have to learn from your adversity, and that takes a little uh, manipulation at times because, like I said, it's easy to. To hang your head, it's easy to sulk. It takes a little more deeper philosophy to kind of look behind the veil and say, "All right, these are the positive things that happened, and these are the things we need to work on, and let's go work on those." And I really think we're there. I really do. I've, I've really liked our attitude, win, lose, or draw in every game we've played. I don't think our guys were overjoyed in a Lehigh win. I don't think they sulked after the two losses, um, and really they were happy at San Diego, but it wasn't. Uh, over the moon there either. I think our guys are just trying to be very consistent week in and week out. Um, and I think, you know, all that doesn't matter what the schedule is or whether it's home or away or night or travel or bus or commercial or charter. you got to show up and put your best foot forward. That's really what we talk about right here. And just quickly, is, is this travel something that, that enters into um, how you prepare for things because you're going back and forth for a while. <laughs> well, when you say it factors into things, what do you mean by that? I mean, are you doing anything different with preparation for these games to try and, you know, um, jet lag? Or yeah, not, not a ton. I think we try to give them a little more room on the back end, both the staff and the team on Sundays. We don't do anything with the team on Sundays except for they do have to check in with the trainer, so they do that later. They have some optional recovery things they do. They put that later, and I have our staff come in later. I think you have to handle that to some degree just a little bit different. Um, but, hey, there's a lot of guys in this world that get on a plane on Sunday night and come back home on Friday every week to make a living. So, uh, And there's some people never been on a plane. So sometimes I think, hey, thank your lucky stars you actually get to fly someplace. And uh, I know Rocco DeLuca, I think it was the, his 50th state, and um, took him that many years to get to North Dakota. These guys have already been there, so part of the global experience. I believe I made it a four-day trip when they came out. Oh, really? They left on Thursday, went back on Sunday. Yeah. Well, it depends on how you do it. I think to some degree, there's if you do it right, there could be some cultural enrichment goes on there. Now, I think I heard that was the first time they'd flown in since two th early 2000s, yeah, I right. think. So uh, you make an event out of it. That could be good. And I think sometimes, too, when you want to make it more than football, I always think about that. If we had a, a really long trip like that, could you go early? Could you go do something? I know when we used to play Hawaii, we'd go to Pearl Harbor. Uh, I mean, it's still it's still an educational mission. and I think if you did it right, you could see some things. If you had the right bunch of kids, it could be a fun fun deal. you got to think about school and where you're at in school and all that. But certainly for us, if we're not in school, it's yeah, more freedom. Season, yeah, ready. yeah. We could be like the old days in Notre Dame. We just get on a train. Just yeah. how would that be? That'd be cool, yeah. huh? Yeah. Just train through America. Play like four games on the road. Got to teach them poker. Then. That'd be awesome. That'd they're be great. Still, they're still big fans. We still have that new luck in with us. Wow. Last week's game was the first uh, of the season between two top five programs. Did really? You go from playing one elite program to another elite program this weekend. So how does facing North Dakota State help prepare you and your team? for this weekend's big sky over East Montana. We, we always want to be our personal best. We don't want the, the opponent to dictate what our preparation is, what our thoughts are. And I know some people think, oh, that's really philosophical. But if you were within the bowels of our program, that, that's kind of how we are. We don't, we don't overhype or underhype any game by any means. Um, so it's fun to play against the best. I think if you're an athlete or anything, really, you, if you're a competitor, you want to play against the best. So that's always, that's always fun. It's going to test you that way. Um, but we know there's there's a ton of great opponents on our schedule, so stay out the mountain, stay out of the valley, keep getting better, keep improving. That stuff sounds redundant, but that's that's how you do it. You have to balance out your schedule and and get in ready and you know train like you fight, fight like you train, and 
But we know we have a lot of good opponents coming, and we certainly have a good one coming this weekend. North Dakota is now ranked. Are they? 25th. There you go. Any other questions? Can we trade Barry King Sterling? Hey, that's why you do it, right? We're ranked, aren't we? I think you are. Yeah. yeah. But again, right, that's, that's theoretically, that, that's one or a group of people's opinion about yeah. who we are. So are we playing for the opinion or are we playing for the guy in the mirror? And every, every week, the opinion gets proved wrong. Yeah, yeah. How do you really know? And how many of all those people really have seen all those teams play all their games? How many really know? You kind of look at a few scores and kind of think, oh yeah, here or there. But I mean, it's great. The thing that's cool about it is how many guys get to go to a top five university in a top five football program. That's that's rare. That's rarefied air um, to be in that kind of an institution. And that's fun when you can talk about the the vet ranking and the school ranking and the water polo ranking and the football ranking and the basketball ranking and just it's that old uh, theory of broken glass you know a rising tide lifts all boats so I think it just everybody's trying to be the best version of themselves and you see it on campus and you see it in other sports and it's, it's good for all of us. And well, for, from a fan standpoint I think it's great to have ranking just because it does set these matchups up. It's one versus four last week. It's you know five versus whatever 17 this week. Yeah. Whether they're accurate or not, it, it, it creates more interest. Yeah. And hey, let's face it, the beauty of it, and I've said this before, one of the great things athletics can do is be sort of a front porch, a marketing, a branding for your entire institution. So every week going across the country is UC Davis. And that, that name is flying around. That does a lot for your university. It does a lot for your graduates. It does a lot for your alums. And that's part of the beauty of college athletics, and that's kind of what it should do. That, hey, if you're in any country in this world and you're at all, you're going to see UC Davis flying around somewhere, ranked for something. And that, that's good. That's good for all of us. Any other questions? Good. Once again, Saturday's kickoff, Montana, UC Davis, 1 p.m. at UC Davis Health Stadium. Tickets are available at ucdavisaggies.com. Thank you very much, Coach Hawkins. Go Ags, thank you.